The sad truth is that dating in today's modern times, 2024, 2025, and beyond, is that the average man is completely invisible to women, yet the average woman is worshipped and treated like royalty. Now, this may be obvious to a lot of you guys who are watching this channel. So in this video, I'm going to put an entertaining spin on this. I'm going to read a lot of comments, uh, Instagram DMs, email, stuff like that. That'll be a lot of shared experiences. You're going to relate to this. It's going to be highly, highly relatable. The guys that are uh, left these comments and sent me these messages, sent me these emails that I'm going to read in this video, you're going to go, oh my God, like totally like dude, that's me. Oh my God. I noticed that, right? I'm going to make this very entertaining, kind of a fast paced rant. I won't ramble or get off topic. And then in typical Casey Redbeard fashion, this is not going to be a cry fest or a complaint fest. This is not to bash women in any way. This is just to point out some sad truths and sad realities. And we're going to get into actionable advice. Again, it's not just a cry fest, but we're going to talk about how you can resolve this problem and date extremely beautiful women like I do, even if you're a very normal, relatively average guy like I am. Okay, so um, a little bit of a preamble here. I've talked about this a bit before, but some things that, you know, you guys may or may not know already. What is the list of traits it takes to be dateable? A man who's considered dateable or heaven forbid, even attractive in today's modern times in this very competitive dating market. Well, here's a list for a man. We'll talk about for a man and a woman. For a man, you have to have an athletic physique, a good looking face, be tall, make mid six figures, okay? Not just six figures, okay? Mid six figures. Be charismatic, have confidence, have really, really tight social skills. Be self-aware, be intelligent, be a problem solver, be extremely useful to society, have a big um, lower part of your anatomy, don't be awkward or shy or have any personality flaws. Okay, that is what it takes. I'm laughing because it's such a long list. And the list for a woman to be attractive, dateable in these modern times is don't be fat, do squats, and don't be super annoying. Uh, as you can see, it's a little bit more achievable for a woman to be considered dateable or dare we say attractive. I would say that's the, the list to be an attractive woman because to be dateable, uh, you can certainly still be fat and annoying as we see. Another thing I want to touch on is, I believe it was either Mystery, the old school pickup artist Mystery, or maybe it was Neil Strauss that came up with this old term that we used to talk about in the pickup artist community. I used to talk about this with Todd V. Dating and my good friend RSD Tyler, aka Owen Cook, called Beautiful Woman Syndrome. Okay, so Beautiful Woman Syndrome is a contagious, a highly contagious disease where a beautiful women overestimate their confidence, their charm, their ability to be entertaining and funny and interesting and charismatic because all they get is good feedback from men. Nobody ever calls them out and says, yeah, you're really annoying or yeah, you're really stupid. And the only negative feedback they ever receive in society is from other women. And they just chalk that up as like, oh, she's just being a hater because I'm a lot prettier than she is, which to be honest is probably the case most of the time. Now, beautiful woman syndrome is no longer reserved for beautiful women uh, anymore. Beautiful woman syndrome, again, overestimating your qualities, thinking you're funny, entertaining, interesting, charismatic, despite you not being that at all. This beautiful woman syndrome is now average woman syndrome, thanks to the advent of social media and women getting bombarded with not only the normal guys with normal income in their normal suburb, living out their normal lives, but they're being bombarded with messages of guys in Dubai, Los Angeles, the top 1%. They're seeing these men are playboys all over their TikTok and their Instagram and they don't know how to judge their value. They base their value on the highest value guy that ever DM'd them and say, oh, I know my worth because like a soccer player DM'd me one time and that's my worth because I had a chance with that guy. Maybe they even banged that guy or not. You know, who knows, okay? So I have some comments here. I'm gonna try to breeze through these um, and, you know, uh, paraphrase them and stuff like that. These are a combination of YouTube comments and Instagram DMs and stuff like that. And we'll just kind of get into them. Um, one guy says, I live in Toronto and the bar and club scene is absolutely bonkers. I'm seeing girls with legit fupas. A uh, fupa is what's oh, called a fat upper. Uh, I want this video to be monetized area. You can kind of uh, guess what the P stands for. Um, yeah, that's that's what a fupa is. I'll put a, a picture on the screen. And it's kind of like, you know, you, you see the woman from the side and she has like maybe like a little bit of butt that sticks out in the back, but she has almost like like a front booty, like 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 a gut, basically. Let's just say that fat upper blank area, the P you can it's above the uh, it's in the vaginal region. Anyway, uh, I see legit girls with legit fupas and short hair being shuttled into VIP sections at the top clubs here. 
and the dudes look happy to have them there. Imagine me being happy to have a short-haired Canadian feminist <laughs> drinking champagne with me with a legit fupa. Wow. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Okay, I like this one. I can't remember the last time I matched with an attractive woman on a dating app. I'm in the Midwest, so maybe that's the problem. Mostly fatties out here, typical corn-fed white chicks. I'm a former high school football player, currently 24 years old, 6'1", with an athletic physique and above-average face. It's hard for me to match anything above what I would consider a 4. Yet the other day, I overheard my female coworkers, who are in their mid-30s, at least 30 pounds overweight, talking about how dating apps are too intense because they are, quote-unquote, flooded with messages. These are far below average women. If I had to rate them, I would give them both a three. Oh, and one of them is a single mom. One of these I'm going to paraphrase a lot, but it's just a guy who says he's an older gentleman, gentleman who says he wishes that I could have seen dating in uh, the 70s and 80s. He said more or less that, you know, women were, were the same in some regards and that they preferred confident, masculine, and handsome men. But they also dated within their own league. And an average woman uh, was not walking around, like an, he says a four or five, an average woman who was a four or five wasn't walking around thinking she deserved this ultra high value guy like the women of today, okay? I have another guy, you know, typical story, uh, six foot five, blue eyes, 29 years old, makes 250K a year. And he says that he can get uh, average woman very, very easily. He even says he can get them to listen to him and submit to him and, you know, basically do anything he wants. Yet he basically struggles to get anything uh, that we, we would consider like, you know, a 6.5 to a seven or above, like a woman that's actually attractive. Okay. I think you guys are getting the point. We're going to get into the actionable advice, but you know, this is all relatable stuff. I'll just go through one more really quickly. Um, uh, it's funny, the stuff you said in your latest video about how if a man wants an attractive woman above a seven or better, they will likely have to pay for it. Well, I'm not ashamed to admit that I have taken that route more than a few times. I'm five foot ten, good physique, as you can tell from my profile. I also make uh, 450K a year. Wow, 450K, that's a lot. Um, I've done a lot of game and have good social skills, but I feel like the moment I go for a woman above a five, I hit a wall. Thankfully, it, within my income bracket, it's easy to hire pros for when times are tough. I met a few girls on Seeking, that Seeking arrangement, a sugar daddy website. And what blew my mind was being hit up by legit fives and sixes on this website, telling me that they wanted a starting monthly allowance of 10K and that their previous sugar daddies did that, plus occasional shopping trips and vacations. So the nerve of these women, these are legit, you know, in his mind, fives and sixes. I'd probably rate them similarly. Thinking that they deserve a guy, you know, again, I, I saw this guy's uh, profile, you know, 5'10", good physique, good looking guy. He's rich. Thinking that they deserve 10K a month to be with this guy. Again, he's not an old fart. He's not an ugly guy. Um, you know, 10K monthly allowance, you know, crazy. The last thing I want to say is this, uh, and then we'll get into the actionable advice. I was uh, at a buddy's house one time. He was dating this chick and my buddy was getting ready and I was alone in the living room with him and this girl that, you know, she was dating and this chick wasn't attractive at all. And while my buddy's getting ready, ready we're all going to go like a club. I actually like hate, you know, clubs, but this is like right after the pandemic and we were locked up in our houses for, you know, what, you know, a year and a half, two years and we could finally go clubbing again. So I said, hey, I'll, I'll go clubbing with you guys. I was bringing a girl as well. And, but I was in the living room, uh, waiting for my buddy to get ready. And this girl, I would call her about a four or five. She was like, I mean, let's just call it. She was a chubby Asian chick. She had the, uh, the FUPA. Again, if you looked at her from the side, she actually had about equal or maybe even more sticking out from the front than she did sticking out from the back. And she says, we're making small talk. And she goes, oh, Casey, it's been fun visiting, you know, your friend out here in Miami, but I just don't think I could live here long-term. And I'm like, oh, you know, why is that? And I'm thinking she's going to say, Oh, because the people here are so fake. They're so plasticky, you know, low quality people, et cetera. But what she actually said was, oh, I can just never get anything done. I can never be productive out here. There's just too much to do. I said, too much to do. Please, please do go on. She goes, well, you know, I mean, I'm seeing your friends. So I'm not really, you know, taking many of these offers, but, you know, I'm getting hit up by promoters and they want to take me to, you know, this fancy restaurant, you know, limousine, me and, you know, my friends and other girls, you know, take us, you know, by limousine to this fancy uh, restaurant. And then, you know, get us bottle service, you know, champagne at this club afterwards. And all we have to do is show up. It's all paid for. And then the other night it's, you know, Scott Storch's 
private mansion party on Star Island in, in Miami, South Beach. Scott Swartz, by the way, is a music producer. He made every hit song you've ever heard in the early 2000s was produced by Scott Storch. And then, you know, helicopter rides and this and that. And I'm like, girl, like you're you're straight up like ugly. Like you're not <laughs> you're not even average. You're not even average. And you're getting hit up by rich guys in Miami for helicopter. I think she was also on that site seeking, but it was a combination of pro promoters just finding her organically, inviting her to these events. And, you know, uh, some of the rich guys, you know, she was uh, on that on the sugar website. So uh, pretty bleak, pretty, pretty rough times. We have, again, below average women, average and slightly below average women, and certainly above average women being worshipped and treated like royalty in today's modern times. Yet they still find a way to go on TikTok and social media and Twitter and they, they find a way to complain. Kind of hilarious. And average men being completely invisible. And for you guys watching this video, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Even you guys who are objectively sevens and eights in the uh, sexual market value ranking based on your height, looks, money, uh, status, game, all that stuff. You're not, you're not getting a rewarding dating life in the West. We know this. So let's talk about what to do. Okay. What I, what I want you guys to do right now is subscribe to this channel because the next upload coming after this one, and maybe two uploads from now, but very, very soon, I'm going to give away a free module from my digital course called Modern Dating Mastery called Dating. The most important decision you will ever make in your dating life is where you decide to date. I'm going to say that again. I'm giving away the first module in my course, which is called the most, the single most important decision you will make in your dating life is deciding where you are going to date. Okay. If you want to stay in the U S or not, and there's solutions, uh, to this on both. I have some notes here. Let me check out what I wrote here. Um, I cannot change reality nor am I here to sell you a dream. If you're looking for a very beautiful woman in the U S and I date, I teach all my students, you should go after dating exceptionally beautiful, you know, beautiful to you, whatever that means to you, but don't, don't cope, you know, don't, don't pretend like, you know, some roly poly fat chick, you know, is like hot to you, you know, don't, don't lie to yourself either, but a girl that's beautiful to you, because if not, you're just, the spark is going to die. You won't be able to feel that romantic love for a woman if you're not highly sexually attracted to her. Okay. So if you're going to stay in America and you want to get, you know, a beautiful woman, I'm not here to lie to you or sell you a dream. If you're not at least five, nine, if you don't have at least a relatively athletic physique, if you don't make at least 120 K a year, decent face, there's not a lot of hope for you. And if you do fit those things, that's just the starting point. That's just the basis. And you're going to need an incredible strategy if you want to succeed. And for those of you guys, uh, going overseas, um, you have to understand something that I've come to a conclusion with that I teach in this free module. Again, that the upload is coming. So subscribe to this channel. So you don't miss that upload, turn on notifications, all that. Because something that I reveal, and another sad truth that I that I revealed is that big cities, awesome cities, great places to live, they suck for dating. And crappy cities with poor infrastructure in third world countries are amazing for dating. Let me repeat that. Great, awesome, big cities are trash for dating because they attract millionaire, tall, rich, sexy playboys that are your competition now. And all women want those, you know, top 1% of guys. But these big, nice cities attract those type of guys and they suck for dating versus the third world shithole small cities with shitty infrastructure where you can't even find anything are incredible for dating because all the super high value guys with money and status and fame, they get out of that city and the women have a lot more realistic standards. They have standards relative to their own value rather than being a five who wants to date an 8.5. They're like a six who maybe wants a seven. They want a guy, you know, women always want to date, you know, a little bit above their own value. They always will. That's built into their DNA, but they're a lot more realistic in these places. Okay. I just wrote down some notes here that, um, yeah, basically what I just said that women base their, uh, inflated, uh, sense of validation on social media, all the guys hitting them up and, you know, big cities, uh, make it impossible because, um, you're not. A six foot four. Again, I know everybody in my YouTube comments for some reason dates more beautiful women than I do. You're more confident than I am. You're better looking than I am. But you know, for the rest of us, for the other ninety nine percent of us, um, you guys probably, if you want a, a truly attractive woman, are going to have to get out of a big nice city 
and date, you know, somewhere else. And if you want to stay in America, um, you're going to have to do a lot. There's a lot of strategies you can, you know, one strategy is set your Bumble. Uh, Tinder can do this a bit. I'm not sure about Hinge as a language preference for Spanish or Portuguese and maybe, you know, do a big geographical area. And if you swipe and you set your language preference as Spanish or Portuguese, surprise, surprise, you're going to meet a lot of women from Latin America and Brazil that may have their good values taken with them. So definitely subscribe to this channel to get that next free module. We talk about where to date, the single most important thing. And if you have to stay in America, which is just an option for a lot of you guys, and you want to see the absolute single best strategy that I've ever put together on the subject of how to meet beautiful women and succeed, even if you're an average guy, like this strategy is super high level. It's the best thing out there right now that anybody has ever put on the subject. Just click the video that has popped up on the screen right now and watch that. It's been a pleasure, guys. Peace out.